Hello, and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. I'm Dave. And today we're going to look at a Pelger Hewitt anomaly, a real Pelger Hewitt anomaly. <laughs> I know, if I can think of all the times I like reported bilobe neutrophils, it's probably just like coincidental pseudos or something, you know. Um, so. Yeah, so, so yeah, we can see this morphology or pseudo Pelger Hewitt and like a uh, left shifts and things like that, right? It's not uncommon. Yeah, so, you know, stress, infections, you can also see it in more insidious malignant things like MDS and true, true, true. Uh, AML, things like that. But, you know, real pelger hewitt anomaly is an inherited condition where you're going to have the LAM and beta receptor be mutated. And so you get issues with segmentation of the nucleus. The nuclear material is still clumped, mature chromatin. It's just it doesn't segment properly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, so and this is like these... a beautiful image here, right? This yeah. yeah. <laughs> Typical bilobed, I think they call I'll call it the Pincenez formation, mm -hmm. like those glasses. Yep. yep, yep. And so I just learned that. <laughs> literally typically, just learned that. <laughs> typically patients who are heterozygous are going to be bilobed. And like about 55 up to 90% of the neutrophils will be bilobed. So not all of them, but almost all of them. And mm -hmm. then in homozygous patients, you're going to have almost all of your neutrophils impacted bilobed or unilobed. Mm -hmm. Yep. But again, that really, really mature chromatin pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So take a look around. I yeah. think this one is also, I think, is just folded. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I also like to tell students to try to imagine that this your spatial orientation, like the, the how the cell is kind of resting, you, can, you know, if you see something sideways on or something, you know. <clears throat> because we forced the 3D structure to be 2D. Exactly. be and like you know so someone this is why i hate bands okay so rants um someone may call this a band and i think morphologically i think it fails the test that we have internally it's a little uh too thick yeah um but even those rules aside I think this does fit some textbooks and individuals definition of a band, but it's not a band. And that's what drives me nuts. Cause if you look at the chromatin pattern on this, it's very, very clumped, right? A true band should show a looser chromatin pattern, a less mature kind of pattern. Um, so yeah, I just think the clinical utility of bands is not high and slash rant. My rant is done. Good rant. I agree. <laughs> Beautiful. It's a great slide. Lymph. We, we were looking at some like nucleated reds the other day. And that lymph definitely made me go. Hmm. <laughs> There's another one. Yeah, and I think one of the big things with Pelgrey Hewitt is that the chromatin is so clumpy beyond just how segmented or or lack thereof the cells actually are. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have trouble with someone making a morphological call that's like textbook right, but misses the clinical picture here, right? That. You don't want to alert the physicians and the clinical team that there might be an infection when there isn't. Um, oh, look at three segments. <laughs> yeah, and but I think that's the importance is that, again, if we're dealing with a heterozygote, which we probably are, right. not every single cell is going to be, but the majority of the cells are. Right, right, right. I think the other thing that'll stand out is that outside of 
this hypo segmentation mm -hmm. trying to pull that one back in and i'm pushing out um the outside of the the hypo segmentation there's really not a whole lot else like you don't see widespread vacuolization you don't see toxic granulation dolly bodies you don't see other signs of stress or dysplasia you're really only seeing hypo segmentation yep absolutely yeah because usually these other things right if it's an mds you're going to see other abnormalities if it's an infection hopefully right it depends on how advanced the infection is you'll see toxic gran and vacuoles and dolly bodies another one perfect perfect cell huh yeah you've been on a roll with these slides melissa i'm not even oh Ew. Hypersegmented <laughs> eo and it's a yeah how cool and it stands to reason, right? That other yep. uh, segmented cells, um, uh, other granulocyte related cells would have this affected too. Yeah. That was a good find. It was good. But yeah, we have a very normal red cells, platelets, very normal platelet on a red cell there. Little, little tangent. Yeah. There's um, right here. Platelet on a red cell. These are great examples for instruction, though. I like this. This one's really cool. This one almost looks like, you know, if you were dealing, <clears throat> excuse me, with more of a band shape, it almost looks like you're dealing with like looking at the side and then looking at like front on from like the end, the very end right here. This looks like the blunt end and then this looks like the side end. Yep. Yep. Some people are probably like, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's just that it's just that you got to remind yourself that these are three dimensional yeah. objects. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And, and so as you're doing your differential, you're kind of gathering this information passively, right? You're thinking to yourself like, oh, a bilobe, ooh, a bilobe or a unilobe, right? You want to really keep track of that. And I think when you get around, you know, four or five percent, you should be starting to take notice. I apologize. My dog's having a drink of water right now. <laughs> you thirsty, bud? <clears throat> So a bunch of cells, neutrophils, they all almost look bandy. Yes, yes. But again, it's that chromatin pattern. I think this one almost, almost trying to segment. Yeah, yeah, no, it's for, that's That one's not bad, right? Yeah, I'll give this them a uh, B plus. This one looks like he's trying right here. Yep. But yeah. they just don't really get good filaments, yeah. right? Yeah. Like they just, yeah. Yeah. But again, the chromatin is really clumped. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and we're using that chromatin pattern as that evidence of maturity, you know. <clears throat> so a nice, large, spready lymph, but I don't think he's reactive. I agree. Yeah. So I think this is a, a, a great slide and I just want to try to put them both in. And of course I kick them both out. Yeah. I'm jealous. I, uh, I'd love to have a slide like this. And to be honest with you, I mean, th this get, gets to the heart of why would you, we do these videos too, is that, you know, um, certain individuals might not have access to these kind of peripheral blood films, but you can still get some degree of the experience uh, virtually here. <laughs> yeah. right. Some look at the cells, but I think for Pelgrim Hewitt, the, the big takeaway is the hyposegmentation and the majority of the neutrophils, you know, all of your segmenting cells, but neutrophils are just the most prevalent. Uh, but 
with the lack of other significant findings. So yes. like we said earlier, no other reactive changes or malignant type of changes. The red cells look fine. The platelets look fine. Everything else looks fine. Yep. But the only thing is you see is repetitive hyposegmentation. That is Pelger Hewitt in a nutshell. Right. Well, I think that's, that's all we have for this video. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for your time. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.